Hello everybody, my name is Brady and I am a 19th century American historian. I'm back with another React video and today we're going to be checking out useful charts. It seems like a really interesting channel. It's such a simple concept. Useful charts. I like it. So I was going to do a video on who had the best claim to the Roman Empire by them, but I found this one along the way and it's a little bit closer to home. We can talk about monarchy and succession and stuff like that, but we get to answer one of the questions that I've had for a very long time. Uh, a lot of people who cover this period think, what if? What if George Washington really wanted to be a monarch? What if he was down with that? What, what would have happened to America? And this is very important here. It's a country that generally uh, started to reject monarchy uh, once uh, common sense really started going around. But let's say George Washington gets in and people are okay with it. Where do we go from there? George Washington does not have any biological children. So I'm very interested in looking at his family tree. This should be a lot of fun. So let's get started. Today I'm going to explore the question, who would be king of America today if George Washington had been made a monarch? Hmm. The first thing you need to know is that there is no easy answer to this question. George Washington did not have any biological children. So even if there had been a King George I of America, it's not immediately clear who his successor might have been. Different monarchies have slightly different rules of succession. So maybe he'll take us through multiple scenarios. Like if they go by these rules, then this person would be it. And then if we go by these rules, then this person would be it. One thing about this part of the line, I know my mouse is a little small here compared to his giant mouse, but uh, when we go down the line with George Washington and his wife, uh, his kids adopted, not biologically related to him by any means. And a lot of uh, monarchies really value the biological connection. Uh, the divine right of kings is heavily connected to that in many ways. Um, so if I were to make a prediction, where would where are we going to go? And he's going to probably tell me if I'm right or wrong. Um, I think you might have to go back up the Washington tree. You might have to go back up to Augustine. At least that's what I'm thinking. And uh, maybe you would go down the path with, with him and his first wife and find the oldest son. So let's see. George Washington... He dies in 1799, so you can't go to Lawrence Washington because he's already dead. And you can't go to Augustine Washington either because he's already dead. That makes things pretty easy. Uh, we might be able to go to William Washington, but I'm not sure. The, this is clearly very nuanced. I'm, I don't know what we're going to do. That's why I've come up with not one, but three different scenarios based on three different relatives that he might have chosen. And the second thing you need to know is that this video is not meant to be taken seriously. Like all of my Who Would Be King videos, I'm doing this just for fun and perhaps to teach a bit of history along the way. Now, it is true that in 1782, a U.S. Army officer by the name of Colonel Louis Nicola did write a letter suggesting to George Washington that he accept the title of king. But Washington strongly rejected the idea. And since then, the idea of an American monarchy has never been seriously suggested. I, I mean, when Common Sense came out, Common Sense by Thomas Paine, it's, uh, it, it was one of the big things that pushed Americans away from monarchy. Uh, during the revolution, they really questioned parliament. But it took them a little longer to turn against monarchy. They thought that the king was on their side in a lot of ways. And not everybody does turn against monarchy, obviously. There are still going to be people who think that is a superior system. Another thing I didn't consider, like, what if this was a form of monarchy where George Washington just picks his successor? 
Um, if we are not buying as much into the divine rights of kings and we're more into the Thomas Paine thing, maybe hereditary monarchy doesn't matter as much to the Americans. And he could pick his successor and it could go down the Custis Lee line. That would be very interesting. But let's have some fun anyway. I've labeled the three lines that we're going to trace, the Senior Line, the Custis Lee Line, and the Mount Vernon Line. And we're going to look at each one in turn. Okay. Before we look at the potential heirs of George Washington, let's first quickly look at his ancestors. Okay. The first member of the Washington family to live in what is now the United States was John Washington. He was born in England and first arrived in the colony of Virginia in 1657. There, he ran a tobacco plantation, was a colonel in the local militia, and was elected to serve in the colonial government. As a plantation owner in early America, he obviously was also a slave owner, hmm. as was George Washington a few generations later. John's estate was inherited by his eldest son, Lawrence, who was George Washington's grandfather. Lawrence married Mildred Warner, who happened to be a 12th generation descendant of King Edward III of England. That's actually very interesting here. You could maybe make, I mean, you'd have to make a really convincing argument here, but you could make the argument that uh, in that case, George Washington does have uh, some sort of a claim to a divine right of king. It's just really, really far removed. But maybe if it's framed properly in a political sense, there would be people who are willing to accept it. Um, I don't know. People can be fooled. So I'm not really out the possibility of that. So that actually adds a very interesting element to that. I, I've read a lot about Washington, but ne never do I see where it goes back to king edward the third especially not in any detail i don't really hear about anything that happens between here and here and what happened like what state mildred warner was in uh at this point like how removed was she really like 11 generations is a lot so i don't know this means that George Washington, like most U.S. presidents, had a little bit of royal blood in him. Lawrence died when his middle son, Augustine, was just four years old. So Augustine, who was George Washington's father, was actually raised by some other relatives until he turned 18, after which he inherited some of the land previously owned by Lawrence and John. Augustine married twice. With his first wife, Jane Butler, he had two sons, as well as a few children who died young. So these two individuals here were half-brothers to George Washington. After his So wait, these two in this generation of the senior line are both dead by the time Washington uh, comes up. So that's a thing. And it seems like this entire generation on the Mount Vernon line are also dead. I, Charles Washington seems to have died in the same year. Um, so I guess it all really does pick up in the generation right after this. So none of these people are actually in contention either way. All, all that really matters is determining what line it goes down. And although... George Washington seems to be more related over here. Um, I'm not sure if it would go back to Augustine's uh, first marriage or not. I, I mean, I've never seen royal a royal lineage determined backwards. If George Washington is the first king, this doesn't make Augustine uh, king zero. That doesn't necessarily happen. So. Now I don't really know, now that I think about it, if you would go back up the tree or not. This is interesting. First wife died, Augustine married Mary Ball, George Washington's mother. 
Together, they had four sons, of which George was the oldest, and a daughter named Betty. Augustine died when George was only 11. At that point, his older half-brother Lawrence inherited the father's estate. Lawrence served in a war against Spain known as the War of Jenkins' Ear Mm. and ended up naming part of his land after his commanding officer, Edward Vernon. So from this point forward, the main Washington property was known as Mount Mount Vernon. Lawrence had four children, but all four died very young. So when he himself died, the land was split between the next two eldest brothers, Augustine Jr. and George. August Jr. was supposed to get the main property, Mount Vernon, but he opted to take a different piece of land instead, and this is why George Washington, the third son, ended up with the main estate. There is obviously a lot that I could say about George Washington, being that he is one of the most famous people in U.S. history. But let me just hit the highlights. So I just remembered, I I read about this before, and I I didn't even think about it that much. The Custis Lee line, like he's he's like loosely not blood related, but through Martha, he's like loosely related to Robert E. Lee. That's interesting, especially if we go down the pathway with where George just kind of picks a successor. Um, if they do go down that sort of way, it could lead to King Robert E. Lee, which would be probably one of the most interesting scenarios, if, if we're just being real about that. That's probably one of the most exciting scenarios, though I don't know if that's how it would play out. I'm trying to think of George Washington's personality and how he would like to do it. He had a certain level of humility to him. Um, I don't see why he... I, I mean, I guess I could see him picking his adopted son. I... I could see that happening if he does get the opportunity to pick him. Uh, he was very conscious of his will, so he I'd like to think he would have the decision made up beforehand so that other people don't have to make the decision for him. Assuming this isn't like an elected monarch, but we're having a totally different conversation in that case. Then we're just having the president except they serve for life. George served during the French and Indian War in which the British defeated New France. He then ran his plantation, becoming very rich and becoming involved in politics. As tensions grew between Britain and the 13 colonies, he sided with the revolutionaries and was eventually Mm. chosen to serve as the commander in chief of the Continental Army during the American Revolution. Of course, the Americans won that war, and George Washington ended up serving as USA's first president. Now, Mm. here's where we're going to depart from actual history and enter alternative history. Cool, that's always fun. Let's imagine that instead of becoming president, he was made king and reigned until his death in 1799. And there were some ideas floated around about, like, an elected monarch, and I, I know we're starting to get into political science terminology here, and uh, a lot of people thought of the presidency as a sort of elected monarch, but let, let's not even get into that because it's not even it's not even the same as what you immediately think. We're talking about he's appointed true monarch king for life. So okay, um, let me see. We're not at the Lee generation. I'd imagine Robert E. Lee is like right below this. What would have happened next? Of the three possibilities that I'm going to suggest with you, let's start with the one that I think is the least likely to have happened. It's the scenario shown in the middle in gray. As I mentioned, George Washington did not have any biological children. However, he did have stepchildren and Mm. adopted children. After the French and Indian War, he married a widow named Martha. Martha had two young children from her first marriage, John and his sister Patsy. These two became George Washington's stepchildren and were raised at Mount Vernon. John, however, died from an illness during the American Revolution. 
his two youngest children, one of which was his only son, were then adopted by George and Martha. Okay. Martha being the biological grandmother and George being the step-grandfather. That adopted son, born the same year that his father died, had been named after George Washington, his hmm. full name being George Washington Park Custis. Park Custis being the name he inherited from his biological father's line. When George Washington became president, young George was only eight years old. He was mm. raised in the presidential mansions and was... Oh, there we go. We got... There's Robert E. Lee. I, I knew he was coming really soon. Oh, God. I would like to think it would be this one because it's just the most interesting thing. Like, you don't think about Bushrod Washington very often. You don't think about William Washington. Uh, plenty of people think about Robert E. Lee. And that that's so interesting because it's a complete game changer. Yeah, having a king instead of a president in general is already a game changer. But where you th when you think about where Robert E. Lee landed later on, uh, it couldn't be much more different in this scenario. It's so weird. So weird. Um... I think if George Washington had the choice, I, based on what I know about his personality, he would pick this. But let's say the rules of succession are set independently of him, uh, kind of conditionally upon him being uh, set as king, and he doesn't get to choose this. Now I'm starting to question it, because I, I feel like, does royalty get passed backwards? If not, then it would go down this way. But if it can be passed backwards, then uh, I guess it would go down the senior line. This is so fat. And of course, we're we're in historical fiction territories. No, nothing, nothing is established. We don't know the specific rules of succession that are set for this particular kingdom. So we can't really know. But it's fun to think about was thus a member of the very first first family. But if George had been king instead of president, would he have chosen his adopted son as his successor, especially since this George was so young? Probably not. But mm, let's imagine that he did. What would have happened next? Well, his adopted son would have reigned as George II for a very long time, 58 years. And then the throne would have passed to his only surviving child, Mary. And guess who the queen's royal consort would have been? None Ooh. other than Robert E. Lee, the famous general who led the Confederates during the U.S. Civil War. So, of course, there are some issues when you're creating a scenario like this um robert e lee might not have married mary custis in this particular timeline it's always possible that uh being part of the royal family ends up changing who she ends up getting with uh, she ends up getting with somebody who's uh perhaps more connected with the family uh I'm uh, not saying that these families are don't have any sort of connection because a lot of these wealthy, top-tier Virginia families uh, are at least highly associated with one another. But it's possible that this marriage doesn't even happen and then we'd have somebody else here. But let, let's not overcomplicate things any more than they already are and just say, yeah, Robert E. Lee, he, he's the guy. Now, we're dealing with alternative history here, so if America had been a monarchy instead of a republic, would it have even had a civil war? Perhaps in that scenario, you would have had a Republican North separating from a royal South. But let's imagine the Maybe. country remained together, remained a monarchy, and ended up abolishing slavery without the civil war. What would have happened then? Well, Queen Mary would have reigned until her death in 1873, and then the firstborn son of Robert Lee, named George Washington Custis Lee, would have become George III. Okay. 
In real life, he didn't have any children, so let's assume in this alternative history that that Back was up the, tree. the case. The throne would then have passed to his nephew, who was the third person to have the name Robert E. Lee. But in this scenario, he would be the first Robert to have been king, so he would have been King Robert the first. Now, obviously, if all of hmm. this had happened, you'd probably have ended up with different marriages, different children, and different lifespans. But again, oh, yeah. we're just... I'm glad he makes that point, because, like, butterfly effect. You change one major thing, and everything else is going to change. Um, we could have still gotten a civil war, and it might have been over completely different stuff. Just assuming that everything stays the same, except for the existence of a monarchy. In this case, uh, Robert I would have been followed by his brother, who would have become George IV, and then by his son, Robert E. Lee IV, who would have been Robert II. Okay, we're in the 1920s. Now, I wasn't able to confirm whether uh, Robert E. Lee IV is still living or not. Maybe someone can let us know in the comments. If he is, he's currently 95, and according to this scenario, would be a longer reigning monarch than Queen Elizabeth II. If he's since passed away, uh, the king, according to this first scenario, would therefore be his eldest son, Robert E. Lee V. This so Robert E. Lee V would, is most likely still alive at this point, I guess. That was probably a little easier to verify than Robert E. Lee IV. Okay. That that's about where I thought it would go. When once you get Robert E. Lee involved, I I see where it's going. It all makes sense. Uh, really, the hardest thing to determine is the first move, the first succession from uh, George Washington. After that, it's uh, pretty easy to just follow standard rules of succession and get your way down the tree. It, it's that first one that really puzzles me, though, because who knows what the rules are even going to be. And if George Washington does end up selecting his successor, what keeps his successor from uh, selecting his successor and probably going against the conventional rules of con succession? Maybe they have a preferred son that isn't the oldest. Um, that doesn't happen very often, but it is a thing. Uh, in a, a post-common sense world, maybe it doesn't turn America entirely against monarchy, but uh, the divine right of kings as like being uh, chosen by God and having their pure kingly bloodline uh, be the only path. I, I, I mean... There, there may be a little bit more wiggle room in the case of an American monarchy, but who knows? This Robert E. Lee is a high school athletics director and was actually in the news <laughs> recently stating that he was supportive of the statues of his famous great-great-grandfather being torn down. Huh. Okay, so that was I should look the that up. That's interesting. Lee line, and like I said, is probably the least plausible of these scenarios to have occurred. But I would like it to have been the route they go. It would just be like nothing will be as interesting as that. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe one of these other lines will be more interesting. It it's interesting because I know one of the guys involved. It, it, because like. Clearly, he ends up being so important later on, uh, but who knows? Maybe I'm underrating uh, Bushrod Washington's potential impact. The second line that we're going to look at is the line shown in red. I call it the senior line because it follows the senior most biological line starting from George Washington's father, Augustine. In most royal dynasties, if a king dies without a legitimate biological heir, the throne usually passes to a younger brother or the younger brother's mm. heir because kings usually don't have any older brothers. Because if you were the king, you were either the oldest brother to start with or your older brother died without any heirs and that's why you ended up as king. And all of these guys are already dead. Okay, that makes things a little bit more complicated. So you could pass it down the line to uh, Bushrod because Corbin here is also 
seemingly dead at the time. Uh, so it would go to Bushrod. But, yeah. And, of course, like, like you said, most uh, hereditary monarchies follow particular rules. It doesn't necessarily mean that this one is going to. Uh, this could have a completely different set of rules. Um, but, uh, once again, we are playing with alternate history, so it's it's hard to make any firm claims. There's something unique about the situation of George Washington becoming a monarch because he goes from uh, being so far removed from his family's royal bloodline to being king guy number one. But in this case, King George the First would have had an older brother with an heir. And I think there's a good argument to be made that... Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, because he, ha- he has a half-brother. Duh. He could go to his half-brother's side. And Sorry, my... There's so many things going on the screen that I got confused about this. Of course, yeah, George Watt. Okay, got it. Never mind. I'm stupid. He would have passed the throne onto that senior biological line rather than to an adopted line or to the line of his eldest younger brother. Although Augustine Jr. was only his half brother, whereas Samuel Washington was his full brother. Augustine Jr. and George shared the same father. And therefore, oh, okay. Augustine Jr.'s son, William, would have been seen as being the most senior male in the whole Washington family. In fact, George Washington's nephew, William, was the first name listed among the executors of George Washington's will. Oh. So if we imagine... So that closeness might also make him... Uh... A, a top choice if Washington is the one making the decision as to how this goes. I mean, yeah, he always has his adopted son, but like if he does have that level of closeness to William Washington, that might also influence uh, why this would end up going the way it does. In this unconventional situation where uh, the the line of succession is a little bit unclear and Washington being the first monarch may have a little bit of input as to how it should be done. ...that William would have been the next king of America, the line would have proceeded as follows. Okay. There would have been King William I for 11 years, King Bushrod for 12 years, King Spotswood for 34 what a name. years, and then a King Bushrod II for a nice long 53 years. Dude. And these unusual names certainly would have set the American monarchy apart as being unique. But from this point, there are two different ways that history could have gone. I think it's most likely that if America had adopted a monarchy, it would have adopted a system of male preference primogeniture like Great Britain had at the time of the revolution. No doubt. Male preference primogeniture means that the throne always goes to a son unless there aren't any sons and in that case it can go to a daughter. So this Mm. Bushrod Washington did not have any sons and therefore in this scenario he likely would have been followed by a queen Estella. Estella did... Could could it potentially have gone back up and gone around? Wait, when did he die? Oh, wait. William A. Washington's gone. You know, I'm just going to not try to figure this out myself because uh, he's explaining very well. Likely would have been followed by a queen, Estella. Estella. Estella didn't have any children, though, so the throne after her would have passed to her male cousin named Lee. Lee, we got another Lee. Lee's daughter, who would have become Queen Odell. After Queen Odell, we would get the current queen, which would be Queen Brenda. Brenda Hansen. So under this scenario, we now have a Queen Brenda reigning since the year 2000. And we would have a new royal house, the House of Hansen, named after her father, the okay. husband of Odell. 
Now, at this point, I should mention that all of the names at the bottom of this chart are all real people who live in the real world as private citizens. I'm therefore not going to give you much information about them because I don't want people tracking them down and doing what Tony Robinson did in Britain's Real Monarch. What happened? I, I, I want to know. Uh, but yeah, that was the first question I had. Like, what's Brenda Hansen up to right now? Okay. Yeah, I, I respect that. I, I totally respect that. I mean, Robert E. Lee the fifth here, I guess he put himself out there in the public eye when he made statements on the statues or whatever. So it's a little easier to comment on what he's doing uh, than it is to comment on somebody who's more or less minding their business. So I, I get that. In that documentary, he showed up at some guy's house in Australia and said, Hey, guess what? You are the real King of England. So yeah, uh, please don't do anything like that. Oof. Now, for those of you who are curious okay. as to what uh, would have happened had a male-only system been used, in that case, the throne would have passed from Bushrod II to his brother, who would have become King James. Okay, this is what I was wondering. Like, it doesn't go to Estella, it doesn't go back up the tree. So, yes, it does go back up the tree and it passes to his brother instead. Okay, and then we go down this way. Okay and then it once again would have gone to King Lee, mm. although in this scenario, King Lee would have reigned a little longer and would have been followed by his cousin's son, William, who would have become William II. But here, Ooh. something interesting happens. William was actually the last male-only descendant of Augustine Jr., and therefore, goes all the way, on his death, the all the way back actually up. would have jumped to a male descendant of George Washington's eldest younger brother, Samuel. So, he Okay, so it's seeming like he hasn't gone into the Mount Vernon line yet, but now that he's explained it a little bit more, I guess I am leaning towards the senior line. Uh, there's many reasons he gave why the senior line seems to make more sense. Uh, succession wise although this one seems interesting the Custis Lee line but I do need to give him a chance to explain the Mount Vernon line before I make a final call on that but this is fascinating I love I was so excited I was hoping uh, can we get like uh, a fam a branch of the family tree just like stop and can we go all the way back up because that that would be really way more interesting and we got it that's so exciting. Even if we had gone with George's younger brother to start with and had followed a strictly male-only succession, we would have ended up with this same person here eventually. And that okay. person would have been King Paul. He would have reigned for 20 years and would have been succeeded by his son Richard, who would be King Richard and the current king. Note that this male-only ah. scenario is the only one in which we get a House of Washington still in place. Oh, Okay, cool. so that's kind of scenario 2A and 2B. We still have one more scenario to look at, and it's shown in green on the right-hand side. And personally... I, I got a glimpse of it on the right, and it seems a little bit less complicated than the rest. So... I'd imagine this one will take a little less explaining. I think it's the most plausible of them all. Remember, oh, really? of course, that none of these theories are actually all that plausible. Fair I enough. I call this last line of descent the Mount Vernon line. And as far as I know, it's never been suggested by anyone else in any various imaginary scenarios, uh, whereas these lines have. The Mount Vernon scenario is based on looking at the will of George Washington for a clue as to who he might have chosen as his royal successor. Okay, so at first I was thinking if he had the choice, he would pick his adopted son. I also don't really understand the relationship he had with his adopted son that well, but I didn't feel as though the fact that he was adopted would stop George Washington from picking him. That's just what I assume based on what I know about George Washington's personality. 
Um, but if there is a good indication in his will, that could totally sway me on that scenario in which George Washington is selecting his uh, successor. Hmm, very interesting. Interessant. Clue as to who he might have chosen as his royal successor. In his will, he left the bulk of his estate not to his eldest nephew, but to this nephew here named Bushrod, a different Bushrod Hmm. than this Bushrod over here. The inheritance included the main Mount Vernon property, which is why I call this the Mount Vernon line, but it also included all of the private papers of George Washington. That we is can therefore conclude that deal. Bushrod must have been someone that George trusted and admired a great deal. Bushrod is also the only person in the Washington family, other than George Washington, to hold a really high-ranking position in the U.S. government. Bushrod Hmm. served on the Supreme Court from 1798 to his death in 1829. I've heard about his involvement on that. I knew a little bit about him. Uh... I've not read much about any of like his major decisions. Uh, it it was not a time, I guess, where he had like the main emphasis on him. It seems like for a good amount of his, I believe, a good amount of his time there uh, was the John Marshall era of the Supreme Court, where when you study it, a lot of emphasis is put on him. Uh, but maybe I should explore Bushrod Washington more because I, I'm getting a little bit more interested in the law and the courts and stuff, and I, I think that might be enlightening. He was appointed by the second U.S. president, John Adams. Therefore, hmm. in this alternative world that we are imagining, I think... So he comes in exactly in the uh, John Marshall era. Uh, pretty close to when John Marshall comes in. I don't know if it was before or after. I don't have the exact year for Marshall, but it was close. I think there would be a strong case to be made that Bushrod was the kind of person that George Washington might have chosen as his royal successor. So if he had, what would have happened next? Basically, we just have to trace the ownership of the Mount Vernon property. Bushrod didn't have any children, so after he died, Mount Vernon was inherited by his nephew, John Augustine Washington II. So So it goes to his nephew. Hmm. Okay. That that that's that's fine. But like this is this is get this is interesting when you tie it to the estate. Um I don't know how well that would end up working out. Uh, it would turn Mount Vernon into more than just a historical site that it is today. It would truly be a royal mansion at that point, which is very interesting. I could only imagine what it would look like after a few generations of that. Probably totally different. So we would have had a King Bushrod for 30 years and then a King John the First good for 26 years, followed by a King John the Second for just six years. If we go back to actual history for a moment, I should mention that John A. Washington the Third was actually a Confederate officer. He yeah. died during the Civil War. Very cool. He was also not, the last. Not 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 trivializing anyone's death, but that that that's an interesting fact. You don't hear a lot about uh, uh, these important figures' families that many generations down, if unless they like really make a splash. Uh, often they'll be stuck getting compared to like the main guy, and it, it's hard to stand up next to that and the un, under the harsh magnifying glass of history that's why we only have like pictures for a few of these people i'd imagine robert e lee is one of the few people who can uh come even close to rivaling george washington as far as like his uh his footprint on history and it's still not quite that close uh it's impressive and it's bigger than most people's impact on history uh, most important people's impacts on history, even that. Uh, but yeah, it's this is complicated. 
I'm enjoying this, though. I want to do more of these useful chart things. I'm going to be doing the one on the claim to the Roman Empire probably next week because that sounds interesting. I, I want to learn a little bit more about how uh, succession works because I, I find that I have a decent idea, but there's just little things that I don't get. It, it's like a mathematical formula that I just haven't quite memorized. Last private owner of the Mount Vernon estate. He was unable to keep up with the maintenance of the property, mm. and so he petitioned both the federal government and the state government to purchase the estate in order to make it a historical site. Cool. Neither showed any interest, though, and therefore, what? instead, Seriously? he ended up selling it to the Mount Vernon Ladies Association, who has owned it ever since and currently runs it as a charity. But back to the imaginary Dope. scenario. If John had been made king, he would have been followed by a King Lawrence or perhaps uh, nicknamed King Larry. And then king by Larry. three that would be more fun. Johns, we would have gotten a John the Third, a John the Fourth, and a John the Fifth. Now, according to my research, this John A. Washington died in 2009 and left no biological heirs. Okay. So to find the most senior heir after this point, we'd actually have to go back a few generations and then trace down another branch of the family where we'd end up with a Mary Washington who coincidentally served in several leadership positions over the years in the National Society of Washington Family Descendants. So Lawrence Schaffner is, I assume, her son? Um... So he wouldn't be king yet. It doesn't say uh, his... Uh, it, he doesn't have dates on his, so maybe he just wasn't able to acquire those. It makes me wonder, uh, would he have been... If we're in, like, a male-dominated uh, case here, I who knows? Because we... So much changes here. Who knows if uh, women are going to be accepted as king in this particular timeline? at this point so maybe it ha still has to go to a male would it go back up and then have to go down to lawrence and is lawrence born at the right time i don't have any dates so i don't know or if, if that doesn't work out would you have to go all the way back up again and go back down the tree uh, down a different line hmm now i wasn't able to find her obituary so i assume she's still living if cool. she's not, the next person in line would be her son, Lawrence. So we'd get a King Larry the Second. King Larry! If anyone has any I'm down with information about uh, this particular branch here, you can mention that in the comments. So there you have it. I've so it seems like we're not sure exactly. Okay, that's fine. Giving you three that's really possible cool. scenarios resulting in four possible candidates for the throne of America today if George Washington had been made king. Which line do you think would have been most likely? Hmm. Do you support Queen Brenda, Queen King Brenda. Robert, King Richard, or Queen Mary? Let me know in the comments. If you find history... Okay, that that seems to be his end. I'm going to let uh, I'm going to let the little plug thing play out and then I'm going to give my final thoughts, I guess. Genealogy and monarchies interesting. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you check the playlists, you'll find that I have videos covering the family trees of famous dynasties from all over the world. That's really and to cool. To see what else I'm up to, follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Thanks for watching. Okay. Now that he's done that, I just want to go back a little bit just to pull up. Okay, so now that he's explained it, I've concluded that I really have no idea. I'm leaning towards the senior line as far as, like, uh, what makes the most sense in my mind. Um, but he made a decent case for the Mount Vernon line, and it really depends on uh, what the rules of succession are and to what degree George Washington is going to have input on that sort of thing. Thing. Though I think the Lee line is very interesting just because it's like kind of ironic when you think about it. I, though I think it's interesting and being on Team Robert sounds interesting. I think Brenda 
might have the best possible claim here. Um, but I don't know. It's very interesting. I'm very, I, I really enjoyed this video. This is the type of stuff that I love. Uh, laying things out in a flow chart way that just makes it easy for anybody to understand i okay i'm not gonna say it was easy because i'm still a little bit confused and i would like to uh uh probably go back and watch this video again on my own and try to learn a little bit more about uh hereditary succession but this was cool and i want to check out some of the other videos he has because this is uh this is a nice introduction to this sort of stuff. You take a hypothetical scenario and you teach how monarchy, monarchies have done it in the past. And, and you go through like so many different possibilities because they're not all the same. And uh, yeah, there's so much there. I really liked it. Thank you for watching and thank you for uh, everybody who suggested useful charts. Nobody suggested this particular video, but uh, you brought the channel to my attention which brought me to this video and uh which means i'm going to be checking out more because this was a lot of fun thank you for watching like this video if you like this video subscribe for more uh leave suggestions in the comment section below and i will see you guys next time thank you